Well, I'm actually here with Ralph Lorenz, who worked on the penetrometer instrument as a PhD student. Ralph, how long ago was that? That was uh, 10 years ago. Uh, we put the, the final finishing touches to it. I started working on it 12 or 13 years ago. Did you ever think that you would have handled the first instrument to touch Titan? Well, that, that was always the hope, of course, and, and uh, now that, that hope's turned into reality. It's great. Okay, and what data have you got to show us? I think this well, is a star date exclusive. Yep, yeah, this is uh, first public showing. This is um, a force record, a 20th of a second long. A 20th of a second across here? Yeah. Uh, on, on this thing, the, the, the sibling of this, this unit is the one that's on Titan right now. And as it gets rammed into Titan's surface when the probe touches down, it records this signature. Okay, and what kind of surface do you think this represents? Well, it, it looks like um, something that resisted before it had to be compressed. So something like a clay or wet sand or maybe a slightly compressed, compressed snow. Um, it have this, has this little spike at the beginning, maybe a crust or maybe a little rock if I had to pick right. two words, creme brulee. That's fantastic. Thank you ever so much, Ralph. Pleasure. Back to you, Adam. Then, after many of the teams had worked through the night, more revelations about Titan began to emerge. We put on the ground something that uh, will allow you to hear our sounds. May you have the acoustic sounds, please? So, this is the sounds that you can hear if you were seated on the probe, descending. So these are the sounds recorded by Marcello Fulquignone's instrument as Huggins descended through the atmosphere. What are we hearing? Wind buffeting the probe? Two hours and a half of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, very happy to report that we have received a very good data set which will surely allow us to achieve all our objectives and probably more than what we had initially set up. Very ambitious objective, but we have surely the data set to do that. We can now start to see a clearer picture of Titan emerging. Now, John, we've seen a fair few results already. When are we going to get some more? Well, we're already committed to producing the first scientific papers within just a matter of weeks, wow. which of course is very fast in the scientific world. But we shall continue to analyse the data for two or three years to come. And in fact, I expect that planetary scientists will be using this data, in fact, for decades. Right. Now, we've, we've seen some fabulous photographs. We've heard about your penetrometer. What other sorts of information are you getting? Well, we've, we've seen just recently a temperature profile so this is uh, the way that the temperature varies in the atmosphere throughout the descent. And what we seem to see is similar to the Earth, that there is a minimum in temperature at some uh, height up in the atmosphere. Kilometers up. Kilometers up, yes. Uh, this minimum is minus 200 degrees centigrade. Uh, and then we warm up by about 20 degrees by the time we reach the surface. Right. And I gather you had some sonar thing on board pinging away. That's right, sending out a sound wave in front of the probe. Now, we're looking at this data, but we see some evidence, we think, for some echoes, once again, at height in the, in the atmosphere. So if that's true, we're wondering what on earth can be causing that. We think it might be because the probe is passing through clouds. And if these clouds are laden with liquid, so rain clouds, or Titan's version of rain clouds, that could provide uh, a, a target, if you like, to give you so an, an echo. echo back to but the probe. But it's got to have liquid in it, has it? It's got to have liquid to give us an echo. OK. And when the sonar got near the ground, did you see the ground coming yes, up? Yes, for about the, at least the last 100 metres, we got an echo from the ground. And when we, we see in these pulses, in these echoes, that they're quite complicated. So in those pulses, there is some information about the ground, but we've got to really unfold those and, to understand what they mean. And match it with the photographs, obviously. Quite. Well, that's fantastic. Thanks very much, indeed. So there you have it. We were privileged to see an amazing day here at Darmstadt, extraordinary excitement among the scientists, fabulous data coming in, and it's going to take years to unpack the results. But meanwhile, history has been made. Thank you, John, from John and me and from Darmstadt. Goodbye. Thank <music> you.